decided to go abroad for further studies, I was sure my grandmother would be upset. Now, he wanted to go abroad for further studies, and he was sure his grandmother would be upset. His grandmother uh, was the one who would be hugely upset. I would be away for five years and at her age one could never tell and uh, since he was going away for five years he was uncertain about his grandmother he was uncertain about the fact that she was already old she was quite aged and he was uncertain whether he would be able to see her again when he returned from there. But my grandmother could. But, author says, his grandmother could. His grandmother could assure that she would survive, that she would live to see him back. She was not even sentimental. And when she, he was leaving, he was going abroad there at the station. He and she did not look sentimental at all. She did not look emotional. She came to leave me at the railway station, but she did not talk or show any emotion. She came there at the railway station to see him off but she did neither talk nor so show any kind of emotion that is she didn't show any signs of weakness her lips moved in prayer her mind was lost in prayer. Her lips and her mind both were busy reciting the prayer, telling the prayer. Her fingers were busy telling the beads of her rosary. Her fingers were also busy telling the uh, beads of the rosary. That is she was completely absorbed in her prayer she was not thinking of anything else silently she kissed my forehead and when I left I cherished the moist imprint as perhaps the last sign of physical contact between us then she silently kissed his forehead. She didn't speak a word. She was constantly saying her prayer and she just kissed his forehead. He got the moist imprint. He got the moist sign symbol on his forehead and he cherished and he and he was he thought happily about it he was he was happy to get it because he believed he thought the author thought that perhaps that was going to be the last of her touch last touch from her from his grandmother But that was not so. But that was not the case. That was not the last occasion when the author, author could see, author could touch his granny. After five years, when I came back home and was met by her at the station, that is, five years back when he returned, he was received by that his granny was there to receive him he was received by granny at the station 
she did not look a day older after five years when he returned he had a look at his granny and she didn't look even a day older the way he left her he found her the same way her appearance everything remained the same and there was not a bit of change in her in her appearance she still had no time for words and while she clasped me in her arms I could hear her reciting her prayers and still today when he returned after five years still she didn't speak a word but when she clasped him when he when she held him firmly the author could hear the recitation of the prayer that or the prayer she was reciting even on the first day of my arrival her happiest moments were uh, with her with her sparrows whom she fed longer and with frivolous reviews okay even on the first day of author's arrival after such a long period after such a long time her happiest moment was spent with the sparrows and now she was feeding longer than ever that is earlier she used to feed all these sparrows for half an hour during uh, afternoon but now she was spending more time with the sparrows and not only that she was she was even scolding foolishly scolding the sparrows that's frivolous review in the evening a change came over her she did not pray she collected the women of the neighborhood got an old drum and started to sing so a change took place in her in her attitude in her behavior and what she did she did not pray that evening she did not pray at all she collected instead of praying she collected all the women from the neighborhood got an old drum and started to sing she collected all the women from the neighborhood I got a drum managed a drum uh, from somewhere and started to sing for several hours she thumbed this sagging skins of the dilapidated drum and sang of the homecoming of warriors and for hours for several hours for hours together say for three four hours she kept on singing uh, she was singing the homecoming of the warriors just like the way uh, the warriors after their victory in the war were welcomed by the people by the uh, by the citizens of a kingdom or the say subjects of a kingdom the same way same way she was singing the homecoming of her grandson she was just beating the drum sagging drum that is uh, the loose drum drum uh, whose skin was loose not very tight uh, you know that skin which is thumped which is struck that was loose not that uh, tight so that it produced a nice sound we had to persuade her to stop to avoid over straining the family members on that day some kind of change took that was extraordinary change came over her and here the family members had to object to it they had to stop her from singing further because uh, for an old woman for uh, for an old man or woman it was too exhausting 
that is or uh, that such kind of exhaustion such kind of uh, work physical labor could give uh, you know trouble and that's why they had to intervene they had to stop her from singing and uh, beating the drum and that was the first time since I had known her that she did not pray and that was the first time in her life since the author was born it was the first time first day that she did not pray the next morning she was taken ill it was a mild fever and the doctor told us that it would go so the next morning she was found a bit sick she had a mild fever and the doctor informed that it would go with the medicine but my grandmother thought differently but grandmother had a different thought had different opinion about it she told us that her end was near she told the family members that her end was near she was about to die she said that since only a few hours before the close of the last chapter of her life she had omitted to pray she was not going to waste any more time talking to us now she said those words she spoke, she spoke those words and she spoke those words hardly a few hours before her end before the close of her uh, chapter of her life and when she realized that when she came to this realization that her death was approaching uh, she omitted to pray uh, that is she shut herself completely uh, from the other members of the family she did not talk to anybody in the house and simply prayed she did not want to waste any time talking to them we protested but she ignored our protest the family members everyone in the family protested they said no nothing going to happen everything would be all right but she protested she, she ignored she knew that uh, she was nearing death she lay peacefully in bed praying and telling her beads she lay peacefully she was lying in her bed peacefully and telling the beads of telling the beads of her rosary even before we could suspect her lips stopped moving and the rosary fell from her lifeless fingers and before they could suspect she was dead she was dead on the lips stopped moving the rosary the beads of rosary or say the rosary fell off her fingers a peaceful pallor spread on her face and we knew she that she was dead as she was dead there was peace on her face and there was uh, the yellow tinge on it and the and the family realized that she was dead we lifted her off the bed and as is customary laid her on the ground and covered her with a red shroud and the family members then lifted her uh, from the bed and laid her on the ground as is customary as is the system and covered her with a red shroud a red piece of cloth after a few hours of mourning we left her alone to make arrangements for her funeral and then they moved away after few hours that after sitting there for a few hours all of them moved out of the room to make arrangements for the funeral in the evening 
We went to her room with the crude stretcher to take her to be cremated, and they returned out a few hours with all the arrangements and uh, they went into her room with a crude stretcher, a crude framework uh, which appears like a stretcher and uh, she was, uh, they went into the room to, to carry her to be cremated. The sun was setting and had lit her room and veranda with a blaze of golden light. The sun was setting. The day was coming towards the end and so uh, the room, her room was illuminated with uh, the light from this uh, the rays from the setting sun and also not only her room but veranda was also a blaze uh, was a blaze with or that is illuminated with uh, the golden light uh, of the sun we stopped halfway in the courtyard all over the veranda and in her room right up to where she lay dead and stiff wrapped in red shroud thousands of sparrows sat scattered on the floor and when they were approaching they stopped halfway halfway in the courtyard so the sparrows coming there in thousands or they spread themselves they scattered themselves all over the place they uh, they cover the empty space of the courtyard and also of the room where the body the body of the dead grandmother lay on the ground and they uh, scattered themselves as close as close to the body as close to the corpse but they sat all silent, all quiet, they were all in grief. The, there was no chirruping, there was no chirruping, there was no uh, chaos, there was no ruckus of the birds there. We felt sorry for the birds and my mother fetch some bread for them and as they were all silent not even a single bird chirruped the family felt bad about them and so mother went into the kitchen and fetched some bread from there and then what she did she broke it into little crumbs then she broke it into little crumbs that is broke uh, the bread into tiny very tiny pieces uh, the way the way my grandmother used to and threw it to them and they did the same way as grandmother used to do and threw it to them the sparrows took no notice of the bread but they were not interested in the bread not interested in the food today they did not buzz they did not pay any heed of the food when we carried my grandmother's corpse off they flew away quietly and when it was time to take away the corpse from there all the birds flew away quietly next morning the sweeper swept the breadcrumbs into the dustbin and what is strange here that not a single bird picked any bit any piece of the bread they all returned without picking a bread a piece of bread a tiny piece of bread and next day uh, the sweeper had to be called a sweeper came and he had to sweep all the all the crumbs of bread into the dustbin so this is all about this chapter the chapter gets over
So thank you for now.